All right, welcome to your Unit D lecture. I'm in uh, Las Vegas right now, so here you go. You guys need to go through this and um, learn it and do the Word Unit D assignments. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up Microsoft Word. And I'm going to go open up, go to open other documents down here. And we're going to go to this PC, so double click it. And then we're going to go to DHS Shared, Business Ed, Business Software, Student Files. Go down to Word Unit D, the very bottom. Open up WD D1. So we have the Healthy Traveler here. Now let's save this quick. So let's go File Save As. And we're going to save this into uh, your folder. So this PC, I'm going to go to Documents. And I'm going to go to that Biz Software folder that I've created, my Word folder. And I'm going to save this as Unit D. Save. All right, so here we go. We got a document um, that we're looking at here, the Healthy Traveler. So let's just scroll through, take a look at it. Kind of a publication here. And we're going to do some different things to it. So first thing we're going to talk about is setting document margins. Now our margins are our border around our page. Okay. And my battery's running low. That's not a good sign. All right, I'm back here and I uh, got the battery situation fixed. So all right, setting document margins. So if we go to this layout tab, you're going to see some of the things that we're going to talk about in this unit. Um, the first one being margins. If I click margins, I can see some different settings for margins. Normal is 1 inch by 1 inch. Narrow, 0.5 by 0.5. Okay, and you can also go down to custom margins. And you can set your margins to be whatever you want them to be. So I can adjust margins to make my, my document look better, make everything fit on it if it's not fitting right. Um, I'm going to go back to normal and just set my, doc, my margins at normal here for now. And actually, let's do this. I'm going to go to margins and I'm going to go to narrow. I'm going to select narrow. And this will just make sure that everything goes smoothly when we're and we're working on some of these different things. Um, all right, now, sections and columns, probably the most complicated we've thing we've talked about to this point. All right, sometimes you want to break your document into different sections. You know, for instance, this right here, I might want to be section one, and then this be section two. Why? Well, I might want to make this into two columns and this be one column. And I might want to format it in different ways in different places. So to do that, we're going to create what's called a break, okay, a section break. So I'm going to click at the end of Travelers here, and I'm going to create a break. I'm going to click on Breaks, and I'm going to do a continuous section break. I don't want to break to the next page. I just want to make a break right here. So I'm going to click Continuous. And it's going to put in a break, and it puts in a space, which I don't really like, but it does that. Um, if I go back to the Home tab and I click on this Formatting Show Hide button, I can see that break. This this little dash thing right here is that break. You know, I might want to take out. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to delete this to bring it back up, okay? But you'll see now down here in your taskbar, here I'm in section one, and now below that break, I'm in section two. So I can take, let's say I just press enter here, move myself down a little bit, but um, I can take and I can make the section two, I can go to layout, columns, and I can change this to two columns, click two, and now it only affects section two. It doesn't affect section one, which is what I want, okay? So 
you know, now if I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, this is a little too tight. I'm going to click here on this paragraph, this line of orange, which is considered a paragraph because we press enter behind it. And I'm going to go to paragraph. I'm going to go to the launcher and I'm going to go spacing after. And I'm just going to go 12 points of spacing just to push that down. Okay, so we now have two sections. We have section one, we have section two. Section two has two columns. Section one has one column. Okay, so now I roll down here and I get to um, a place where I want to start a new page. Okay, so I want to take malaria, a serious health risk for travelers. I'm going to click in front of that. I want that to be the start of my second page. Okay, so I'm going to put another break in here. And now I'm going to go break, and I'm going to do a page break. Do I need to break this into a new section? Well, no, because it's still going to be two columns. I don't need a new section. I just need it to be on a new page. So I go to breaks, page break. Okay. The shortcut for this is con hold control and press enter. That will do the same thing. It forces that to the next page. Okay. It creates what's called a page break. And you'll see right there, hey, here's the little formatting mark for it, page break. Okay. And I can look. <clears throat> and here you are. Now I'm onto my second page. Okay. So that's what's called the page break. You know, you can do it two ways. Control enter. Or you can go to breaks, click page break. And that works too. So that's inserting a page break. Now we're going to insert some page numbers. So this gets a little bit tricky, but um, when I'm inserting a page number, okay, I'm going to go to my insert menu and I'm going to go over here to page number in the header footer section. So if I click that, it's going to say, okay, where do you want the page number placed? Do you want it at the top of the page? Do you want it at the bottom of the page? Where do you want it? I'm going to go bottom of the page and I'm going to say bottom of the page and I want it to be in the middle. So I'm going to pick this style right here, plain number two. Click it. it places in a page number. Okay, I can't just go down here and type one. Otherwise, then it's going to be one on every single page. I need to put in this page number um, field is what it's called. Okay, so I got a page number on every single page. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that works good um, to get a page number in there for me. I'm going to, you know, close this. Now, anytime I want to go mess with the header or footer, a shortcut to do that, just double click. You know, and I can pop myself into the header section. I get into the header and footer tools menu. And if I want out, I can click close header footer. If I go down here, you know, and I wanted to manipulate the page number, I would double click. I'm down here. If I wanted to get rid of my page numbers, I'm in the footer. I could do that. Now, sometimes you want, you know, something different for your first page. You know, like I got the Healthy Traveler. This is the cover sheet of my little article that I've created. Maybe I don't want page number one on the title page, on the front page. Maybe I want to start with page two here. Okay, so I don't really want to number this page because it's my title page and I don't want that on there. I want a different first page. So I'm going to check different first page. Okay, so when I do that, that first page becomes different. It becomes its own section. And then I still have pages two, three, four. Those are all going to be the same. They're all set up the same. But I can do a different header footer in the first page. Okay, so I can actually take and I can add something different. So I could go, I'm going to tab to the middle. I'm going to type in healthy traveler colon travel and health information now nah, we don't want to do this hang on let's back out of that 
All right, we're going to leave that blank on there. But I'm going to go, let's go do this to the second. This is where I want to do it is down here. The second section right down here. Okay, so I'm going to press tab, get to the center tab stop. And I'm going to type that same stuff. Healthy traveler colon travel and health information from quest specialty travel and I can take and I can select that I can do whatever I want to it I can change it to orange I can put a border under it okay it becomes now on every single page except for my first page why it put a box border around it I have no idea should just do a bottom border but I don't know if I hit something or what it's been doing this for some reason to us I'm just gonna leave that border off then so all right get out of this you could double click back in your document get out of the header footer this actually doesn't look very good at all um, so <laughs> let's go back in there and let's get rid of this let's delete that but that's something that we could do <laughs> Okay, and then obviously my first page is, is different, you know, so I could double click in my footer here and say, all right, I'm going to put my name down here. I'm going to put the date over here. So we got 2-8-2018. I'm going to put the class, I mean, business software. That is only going to show up on the first page, okay, because we have a with our header footer, we have a different first page. Sometimes you want different odd and even pages. You know, in this case, you don't really need that. The case where you might need that is if you're doing like a book, you know, because your left page in your book is going to look different than the right page in your book. The page number might be on the left side bottom on the left page. It might be on the right side bottom on the right page. You know, so your header and footer can look different if your publication is a book or it's bound, you know, on the side. So that can change things. All right, so let's go to the next thing. So let's go, and we're going to insert a table. So I'm going to go to where it says preventive. Let's get back into our double-click into your document to get out of your header footer. Where it says preventive options for serious travel health issues. Okay, and we're going to insert a table into that spot. Now I'm going to take, and for this table, I want to go back to having one column. So I'm going to go above that, and I'm going to go to the Layout tab, Break, and I'm going to do a Continuous Section Break right there. Okay, and I'm going to tell, now I have a Section 3. I'm going to tell Section 3, hey, Section 3, I want you to have one column. All right, so now I can place a table into here, and it's going to be one column. So we've got we've got three sections now. Here's section one. Section two is two columns. We go down. We get to this point. We put in a section break. We went back to one column. This is section three now. Eventually, we're going to make this section four and have that be two columns again. But for now, we're going to put our table into here. So to insert a table. I go to my insert tab and I click on table. And there's a grid here where I can kind of set it up the way, you know, I might want to do it. I like to go to click on this insert table button and just go ahead and type in what do I want? You know, how many columns do I want? How many rows do I want? And I know for this table I want 5 columns and I want 6 rows. And I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to place this table in. Okay, and I can take and I'm going to add some information to this table. So I'm going to type in disease, vaccine, prophylactic, drug, eat and drink, safely, 
avoid insects. And then we need to put in the disease here. So we're going to go malaria. I'm going to click below that and go typhoid. Click below that and go hepatitis A. Now you can see these little squares in here and these marks. These are because I have my formatting marks on. So if I was to go back out here and click on this button, the formatting show hide button, you know, that's those aren't visible. Those are there just to help me to know, hey, where's my section break? Where did I press enter? Where, you know, where what are the things that I've done in the document? Calera and Japanese encephalitis. There we go. All right, so vaccine. All right, so let's go. We're going to put in some things here for our chart. We're going to insert a symbol. So I'm going to click on insert. I'm going to go to the very far right where it says symbol. I'm going to click that drop down list and I'm going to use a check mark. Check mark symbol. Now, if you don't have this, I probably have it because I've used it before. Go to more symbols and you can find all kinds of different symbols that you might want to use. And right now, you'll see I'm in symbols. It's on symbol. So there's a, a number of symbols in here. I can go through and find a symbol that I want to use. I don't see a very good check mark. Do you guys? Maybe I'm missing it. I don't know, but I'm going to go to somewhere else and find a better check mark. So go down to, you want to go down to like web dings and wing dings. You know, here's a web ding. And you got some different symbols in there. And here's a check mark. God, that one's kind of ugly too. Let's try something else. Let's go to, you know, if I go to wide Latin, this is going to be that kind of font. There are some symbols in there, but there's probably a check mark in there too. But you can look at each of the fonts too. But I'm gonna go to Wingdings. Here you get more pictures. There you go. Here's a decent one. So in Wingdings, we got this check mark. That's a pretty good one. Okay, so that's a symbol. I can insert that symbol. And then I can close that. Once I've done that, that becomes saved as one of my favorites for my symbols. Now, if I'm going to use multiple symbols, I'm going to select this. I'm going to go Control C and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go click and paste it, Control V, wherever I need to paste it. Okay, so I'm going to place the check marks where we need to place them here into our table. Okay. Now with tables, you can quickly format these guys. If you click on a table, you'll get table tools active up top. There's a design tab. There's a layout tab. If I click on that design tab, all right, I can take and I can click this drop down list and there's all these pre-made designs, pre-made things, pre-made designs that I can use. And so let's say I select this guy right here, this blue one. Okay, I can take and I can place that formatting over the top of, uh, of this table. And, you know, with that, I can take and I can adjust the headers. You know, I like the header row to look different, I think. I think that looks good. Do I need banded rows? I don't know. You can. Do you need the first column different? Yeah, yeah, probably. Last column, well, that doesn't make sense. Banded columns, well, you know, maybe. Total row, well, there is no total. So you can turn those on and off however you want to do it. Okay, but there's all these preset, you know, you can use any of these different colors that you want to use. And you can format this any way you want. You can select this, you can change the shading to be a different color. You know, you can change anything anywhere to be whatever you want it to be. 
you know, but these preset ones are kind of sweet because they can just do it real quick for you. So that's inserting a table. Um, and that gives us a few different things. Now, with that table, that becomes section three. I want to go back here, and I'm going to insert a section break. I'm going to go up top here, though, and where I already have some space. And I'm going to go to Layout, Breaks, Continuous Section Break. And I'm going to throw a section break right there. Now I want to go back to having um, two columns. So I'm going to go Columns 2 so that I can wrap that around. And then I can see, hey, oh, geez, right here. I'm going to go Control Enter, put a page break in, break that into the next page, and here we go. Now we're we're rolling back down through here again. Okay, and it's going on to two columns, and it's breaking up just how we want it to break up. So I have four sections now: one column, two column, one column, two column. That's how my sections are going. That's the reason for my sections is I have different different columns. Okay, so now let's go. We're going to talk about uh, footnotes and endnotes. Um, so let's go to let's go to the very top. So let's scroll to the top of our document, and we're going to click on this references tab. Now we're going to work with how to cite things, cite sources, manage sources. Um, Word can do all this for you, which is really nice, especially if you're a student and you got to do different types of formatting like MLA or APA. You know, depending upon what you need to do, it can it can set up to that style. It can save your sources. You're not writing all those down. You can type them in, save them, pump out a bibliography at the end, and life is good. So that this is nice. This can save you a ton of time. Um, so I'm going to scroll down and let's go to where it says travel related risks. And let me find where I need to be here. All right. So. Let's go down, let's just put in a footnote. So, the following key factors, which travelers may be exposed. And, okay, let's say that we wanna put in a footnote. Okay, so I could click behind standards of accommodation and food hygiene. I'm gonna click there, I'm gonna add a footnote. Why do I add a footnote? I wanna add more information about this topic to the bottom of my page. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click insert footnote. Okay, that, that means that's going to be additional information about this topic in the bottom of my page. Okay, so I'm going to type in behavior is a critical factor. For example, going outdoors in a malaria endemic area could result in becoming infected all right so that's a footnote now i'm going to click below or next to public health here i'm going to insert another footnote if i click my insert footnote again i got footnote number two okay so here's number two second footnote obviously I'm referring back to public health here. So I'm going to type in, it is best to consult a travel medicine, medicine specialist, period. Okay, so that's a footnote. That refers to that. We scroll down, go past our table here. We can see we got some more, some bullets here. And we want to put in a few more footnotes. So we got disposable gloves. I'm going to click behind that, insert footnote. That's going to be my third footnote. At least two pairs. I'm going to go behind tweezers, insert footnote. 
pack these items in checked luggage. I'm going to go to number five. Ooh, where is five? Medication. Medica there you go. Anti-motion sickness medication. We're going to insert a footnote, so I need to be on references. Okay, and that is going to be, we're going to say all medications should be stored on carry on luggage. And then I'm going to go click by sunscreen, insert a footnote, more information about sunscreen, SPF 15 or greater. All right, so we got to have some more additional information in the footnotes. Now, if you do an end note, okay, what's an end note? Well, an end note's going to put it at the end of the document. A footnote's going to put it at the foot of the page. Okay, so that's the main difference between end notes and footnotes. Um, so we don't need to do too much more with that. But let's go back to the top of our document. So now, let's say that we're, we're working with um, references. So it says general considerations, and it says over half the arrivals were for leisure and holidays with business, religious pilgrimages, and family visits cited as other major reasons for people to travel. All right, so let's put a citation there. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to click at the end of that, and I'm going to click in front of the period, actually, to put the citation in. And up in references, I'm going to click insert citation and I'm going to insert a citation and this is a new source so I'm going to go down and you can see there's already some sources in here I'm going to go to add new source add new source and I'm going to click on that now what type of source is this that you're using depends what you're using but we're going to say we're using a report and we're going to say this is a corporate author and this came from the World Tourism Organization. The title of that report was Tourism Highlights 2015. Publisher was the World Tourism organization city was Madrid report type was white paper and the medium was it was a printout it wasn't online or anything like that okay once I've done this this saves me a lot of time because I'm gonna press OK it saves it as a source it puts it in in the correct formatting MLA formatting into my document okay I obviously got this information from that report and placed it into my document so I need to cite the source. Okay, that's what this is all about. So, I've created a source, I've inserted a citation. I can click manage sources up top, I can see what kind of sources that I have in this document. Okay, these have been placed inside of here. These ones are other ones that I could use that I've used before. So, or that I've placed into this document, I haven't necessarily placed um, into the document itself yet, but I've created those as sources, is what I'm trying to say. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so I can put, um, you know, some more sources in. So this quote right here, let's say, you know, I got this from a source. I can click here. I go insert citation. Okay, what? where did I get the source from? Well, let's say it was Mary Baker, Adventures in Africa is where I got this source. Click, bam, got it. Okay, so let's say that I go down and I got this statement um, from a source. So I'd go insert citation. And let's say we got that for Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Malaria 2016. Bam, I'm going to pop that in. Now, <coughs> sometimes you want to put the page number in, or that might be what's required. You can simply right-click on that source 
and you can go edit source. No, nope, that's not it. You can change the source. Um, you go to, is it edit citation? Edit citation, there it is. And then you can add the page number. So let's say this was off page 46 of that document. And I can go ahead and press 46 and press OK. It adds it to the document in the MLA format. Okay, so in the format that you need to and want to use. You insert that citation. All right, so manage sources. We talked about Here's my sources. These are the ones that I've placed inside of there. Okay, these ones I have as sources that I have not yet cited. So now you get to the point you want to create a bibliography. And I remember when I was younger, this is a pain. Like, whoa, well, okay, how's it supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? Ugh. Okay, so this makes your life a lot easier. And it's worth a shot. Sometimes English teachers won't even allow this either, but um, but it's worth a shot. You click bibliography, and now all your sources are taken care of. You basically got the same setup. You got MLA format, so it's gonna format it in that style in your bibliography references or works cited, whatever you want to name it. Click it. I'm gonna click works cited. Bam! All my sources are there. All of them are popped in. All of them are cited correctly. All of them have the correct punctuation, which I remember was like a nightmare to try to remember all that or try to figure that out and put it in right. And anyways, it's all taken care of for you. Okay, so there we go. So now you've got it. Okay, and this this is the most complicated unit because you're talking about sections, we're talking about sources, we're talking about a few more complicated things, but things that I think can really help you save you time and you know help you do better on things as a student and as a college student in the future so I'm gonna go control s and save my document I probably should have did that a lot more than I did as we went through you should always do that you should always save a backup if it's something very important I would back it up on Google Drive um, but that's unit D so now you guys need to go and get into your unit D assignment sheet do the questions, print those, turn those in, and then do the Unit D screen checks. And okay, so make sure you guys do the Word Unit D assignments. When I get back, we'll screen check those and get that all cleaned up. So, all right, I'll see you guys when I get back. Bye.